Hi everyone, and welcome back to our FBS RPG series. Uh, we're currently in chapter one, you're working on the menu, and in the last episode we set it up uh, to have our persistent menu that we can call up at any time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to just tidy up that transition, because at the moment it's quite harsh, uh, and make it a bit more uh, nicer for the player's eyes. And then we're going to just simply just add the template ready to be filled with stuff um, onto the actual menu interface itself. So to start things off, let's work on that transition. Now the transition only happens in two places, one going to the menu and one going from the menu. So let's do the one to the menu first of all. And where we have that is in our controller, I believe it was. Yep. So here we have our input menu, which we did in the last episode. And what we're doing is we're adding stuff to the start of this before we load the stream level. Okay, so what we need to do here is we can call pull this out a little bit, and then on the true, we'll and between true and the load stream level, we're going to put in a fade. Now to do a fade, you need to get the first of all the camera. So the way you do that is you simply just get player camera manager, and this is the sort of actor that contains and controls what the player is currently seeing. Okay, so we use this, and from here, just type in the word fade, and you'll get three options. We want the start camera fade. Now, the start camera fade has loads of options for us. We have from alpha, to alpha, duration, color, should fade audio, and hold when finished. So from alpha is zero by default. That is basically um, no fade at all, no color. It's just going to be uh, what you see in the game. Uh, to alpha is its target, so what value should it go towards? So we want this to go towards an alpha of one. In other words, blocking out the screen. Okay, it's gonna go from no to full. The duration is how long it should take to do that fade. And we're gonna do a duration of 0.2 seconds. So something really quick. Um, we, could, we can do it quick. We don't need to put in a proper loading screen because it's already loaded. Okay, the persistent menu is always there, which makes it really useful for us. The color is what color we're gonna use. We're gonna do a fade to black. So we're gonna leave it as black. Should fade audio. Yep, we'll tick that. And that does what you think it does. It just fades out the audio. And hold when finished. Now, this means that when it fades to black, it's going to stay black until we tell it not to. So we want that to be the case. So tick that to be true. Now, true here is going to go from the branch up to our start camera fade. And then, before we go to load stream level, we're going to put in a delay. Now, the reason why you put a delay in is because we need to start the fade. And because it's asynchronous, so this thing will happen and then this thing will happen immediately, it'll, it'll cut to the next level, uh, to the menu level, and do the fade there, which you don't want. You want to fade in the world and wait, and then when it's black, then fade to the new level. Okay, so a delay here of the same duration that is of the fade. So I've got 0 0.2 here, and in fact, let's go that a bit higher, let's go 0 0.3. And I'm going to put completed into my load stream level. Okay. And we'll just tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so this will handle the fading to the menu. So let's check that out and see how that looks. And there you go. Obviously, it goes black and stays black because we haven't told it to go back the other way. So let's make it go back the other way. Now, the way we're going to do that is on the menu itself. So go up top where you see blueprints. Click on that and you'll see sub levels. You want to edit the menu blueprint. And in here, uh, we're going to, before, again, right at the start, so before we do the target blend, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did on the controller. So we're going to get the player camera manager, start fade, Ooh, start camera fade, and plug that in. This time, the from alpha is going to go from the alpha of 1 towards 0, a duration of 0 0.2, and black again still. And we're going to tick the should fade audio and hold when finished. Click compile, and let's see how that looks. And now you've got a much, much smoother transition. Okay, so now we need to make it so we go back to the other menu. Okay. So let's handle that transition. So we're going to go into our uh, sub level for our so open level blueprint. Click on open level blueprint. Um, actually, no, let's put it in the test world. Let's put it in test world. 
and in here we're going to do the fade at the beginning of this so we're going to get the player camera manager start fade and it's going to the player world so it's going to go from the alpha of uh, one alpha of zero duration of 0 0.2 and the color of black ticking should fade and should hold click compile that will handle the, the transition on one side we need to make the transition now from menu to that screen so on the menu where we control it to go back so back on the player controller um, we are going to call this thing again but for the bottom Okay. We'll straighten that out. Okay. So it's exactly the same. Um, we're going from 0 to 1 over 0 0.2 seconds, fading to black, duration of 0 0.3 before it carries on with the rest of the world. So now when I push play and go into our world, we can fade to menu and it fades back. Okay, so now we've got a nice smooth transition between our menu and the game. So now we've got the transition done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the sort of the menu uh, template that we'll be using for the rest of the series. So the idea is, is what we're going to do is we're going to set up the menu uh, UI. And as we are developing the systems, we'll insert them into the menu UI. But first we need to make that sort of container for the menu. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it UI. And in there, I'm going to make a subfolder called Menu. And in here, we're going to add a new user interface widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this one the Player Menu underscore UI. We're going to open this up. And it's going to be quite a simple one. As I said, we're going to add loads more stuff to it um, eventually. Uh, but let's start, sort of set up the basics. So first of all, we need a canvas panel because we want it to be absolute and fill the whole entire screen. Um, so our canvas panel is the easiest way of doing that. Next, we're going to need a, a vertical box. And the vertical box, we want to stretch again the whole length of the screen. So go over to the right hand side anchors and tick the bottom right hand one, which is the field screen. And change the offsets in all four categories to zero. And there we have it filling the whole entire screen. So next, inside the vertical box, we're going to have a, um, a horizontal box. Sorry, not horizontal box, we have an overlay first. And then a horizontal box inside that overlay. And this is going to consist of the top bar. So this is where you're going to see um, a, a bar at the top which is going to have the player's name and menu options like tabs essentially. So let's fill out this information. So the overlay allows you to overlay multiple widgets on top of each other. So here I'm going to have a horizontal box and then a border as well. And the border, we're going to make it fill the width of the overlay because the overlay is filling the whole width here. So the border here, we want to fill the entire width. Next we want to go and change the borders background color. So we're going to go to brush color and let's change that to a different color. Let's do, uh, let's keep it brown for now, uh, the, uh, gray sorry, for now. Um, and what we'll do is we'll change this later on. But I'm just going to give it an alpha of, for some style of 0.8. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this to the top here. This allows me to save and use reuse this same setup uh, for many other menu options. But eventually we'll probably replace this with an image. So that border has now got that color. We can't really see it because it's thin, but it will soon thicken out. Next, we're going to go and change the horizontal box. And again, this one's going to fill the entire width. And we'll leave it like that for now. 
Um, and then we're going to right click on the overlay, wrap with size box. And the size box does what you think it does. It changes the size of the box and you can give it different overrides on the right hand side here. So I'm going to change its height override here to a pixel value of let's try 100. Yeah, I think that's good enough. And then I'm going to go to my border and fill it in the vertical as well. And the horizontal box, I'm going to fill it in the vertical as well. Okay. Okay, so inside the horizontal box, we've got text values. Um, so let's add some text values to this. Actually, let's make some buttons because they will be clickable. So button. And we're going to design one button and duplicate it. Okay, so let's just zoom in here. And this button here is going to have some text in it. So drag some text and put it inside of the button. Okay, so the text, I'm going to give it a white font. Um, why has that gone all grey? Oh, it's because it's underneath the border's in the wrong place. So I'm going to drag the border above the horizontal box. There we go. That makes more sense. Okay, so the button, right back to the button. Uh, we want white text, which we've got already, but we're going to change the button to have no fill on it. So go to the style in the appearance section of the button, and in here you'll find uh, normal, and we're going to change the draw as none. Hovered, again, none. Pressed as uh, none. And click compile. So now we've got like an invisible button with some text on it. Okay, so now I've decided I want to have my button be a certain size. So let's right click on button and wrap with a size box. And click on your size box and we're going to go over to the right hand side and change the minimum desired width, which is this one here, so tick it. And we're going to type in the value of let's try 100 and see how that looks. Okay, let's try a bit more higher. That looks a bit more like it. Okay, so do 300. And I'm then going to rename this button. We'll call it character button. And the text in the middle is going to say the name character. We'll work on fonts and things like that later on. Um, we'll just get the setup first of all. So once we've got one button, we now want to make multiple. So select the size box and control W to create multiple buttons. And let's rename some of them. So this one on the far left here, we're going to name this one quests. The one on the right of the character, we're going to call this one inventory. And the last one here we'll do, uh, we'll do Actually, we'll do, we'll do equipment. Uh, we'll, no, we'll do skills, sorry, we'll do skills. Okay, so we have a quest sheet, a character sheet, inventory sheet, and a skill sheet. The character sheet will be where you equip different uh, items. Inventory is where you're gonna see the stuff you've picked up. Quests are obviously your quests, and skills is what skills you've got to unlock and uh, spend points on. So the last thing we'll do is change this horizontal box to be on the right-hand side. So select the horizontal box and change it to right alignment rather than fill, and it'll snap it all to the right. Okay, so there are all our text fields done for the horizontal box. Now, this was all already in a vertical box, okay? So we've done a vertical box here, and the top one here is handling the menu. So I'm gonna rename this one top menu. And underneath that, I want to be a widget switcher. Now the widget switcher allows you to insert other widgets which we'll do a sub widgets later on and this is where we insert the inventory screen character screen and so forth so let's add a widget switcher in here and onto the vertical box okay and we want this to fill the whole entire screen so hit fill and it'll fill up the available space okay hit compile and we're done here close this 
And let's go, go up to our level blueprint for our menu. So go to blueprints, open level, uh, open a sub level menu uh, blueprint. And on begin play, we're going to do um, add the menu. So create widget. And we're going to choose the player menu. We're going to store that as a reference. And from there, we're going to add to viewport. Hit compile. So let's see how that looks. Okay, there's our menu. Enter again, but you see it's still there. So what needs to happen? Well, we need to remove all the widgets we have on the screen on that transition. So back on that menu, uh, blueprint. When we add this to a viewport, uh, we, before we do that, we want to remove all the available widgets before we get to here. And when we go back, we want to remove all available widgets. So we're going to go back to our player character, uh, controller, sorry. <clears throat> and when we click on the menu button, before we do either of these, it doesn't matter which one, because they're going to do the same thing, we want to remove all widgets. So remove all widgets. Okay, and it clears the screen basically of any widget on the screen. Hit compile, close, and let's hit play. So now I'll get the menu appear, and then it fades back out. Okay. And there we have it. There is our menu, it's a lot nicer on the eyes now. It's set up ready to receive more stuff and, and for further decoration. So see you in the next, uh, next episode. We'll start adding more decoration to it, uh, changing the font and things like that. Um, if you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Brian Laley where you can find that video plus many others. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you again so much. If you have any suggestions for content, leave a comment below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.